Alrighty. So, motion on any five points. You don't need to write that down. Again, remember I said yesterday, right? I'm the tourist, guys. You guys are the tourists. Take your own picks. Decide what's important to you. So, we're going to calculate the force acting on an object resting on an inclined plane. We're going to include the normal force friction components of the gravitational force, and we're going to calculate the components of that gravity exerted on an object resting on an inclined plane. And I think those are exactly pulled right out of the Manitoba trip. I'm not mistaken. Here's where it really begins. And again, you don't have to write everything down. There's going to be some lead up here, some explanation, right? This is my sort of my speaking though. So when an object sits on a flat surface, gravity acts straight down. We call that FW. And the surface exerts a normal force, and we call that <coughs> FN. And does this object here, does it move? Does it accelerate? No. How come? Because the forces are balanced and the net force is zero, right? The downward force is exactly balanced by the upper force. The things just sit there. A little later, right? <laughs> but what happens when the surface is at an angle? Right? What happens? Just listen to me now. Everything else is secondary for now, okay? Unless there's a fire alarm or a lockdown, I'm number one. Got it? What happens when the surface is at an angle? Which way is gravity? Okay. Still down, right? So this one now is no longer like that. It's now down like this. But the normal force, remember, is always perpendicular to the surface. So it also goes like this. And now are those forces, this one doesn't exist anymore. This is not there. Right? Are those forces balanced? They are not. And so what do you get? The F net is not zero. The F net is some number, which means that there is now a acceleration and the whole thing's going to slide down the ramp. Okay. Why do I slide down the ramp? Because there's an unbalanced force on it. Right? Gravity is not balanced by the normal force. That's why objects slide down ramps. Do objects always slide down ramps? They slide up. I guess they're already moving. If I put the uh, hole punch on the table, flat, balanced forces, right, on and if I do this, how come it stays there? Am I using my Jedi powers? No, it's just friction. Right? Which way is friction? Right? Opposite. Exactly. So today we're just going to deal with frictionless wraps, but of course we'll get more complicated and deal with wraps um, with friction in a bit. So, when an object sits on an inclined plane, that was sort of the preamble, this is kind of, I would say this is kind of the start, where you could, you know, if you're one of those right of down person, this is where you would start. When an object sits on an inclined surface, gravity acts straight downward, we're going to call that FW, as always, weight force. And the ramp exerts a normal force, Fn. But you'll remember that Fn is defined as a force that the surface pushes with, and it's always perpendicular to the surface. Always perpendicular. And this creates that net force. The quantities Fn and Fw are simply the components of the weight force Fw. Oh, wow. I'm talking about this. Yeah, let's just do this. I haven't given you an angle for this ramp. Let's mark a theta down there, some unknown angle. Okay. And I'm now going to draw up here. I'm going to move this FW if I can. I'm going to do this. Oh, 
Okay. So what I've done here, Braden, is I've taken FW and I've broken it into, you could think of it as X and Y components, just like we took vectors, right? We took those vectors and we broke them into X and Y components. I'm doing the same thing, but it's now this vector that's straight down. So I'm going to call this one here that is kind of parallel to the plane. I'm going to call this one FD down the plane instead of X or Y. It's the, it's the component that is down the plane. Not every book will use that. Okay. And then this one here is F, we call it FN. Um, it's equivalent to this FN. It's numerically equivalent. It's the component of the weight force that is perpendicular to the surface, which is really hard to abbreviate. Some books will call it F perpendicular. Have you seen that F, that perpendicular sign before? No? You never seen, really? Okay. Yeah, the upside down T it means perpendicular, right? Okay, and that's what this says down here. The quantities Fn and Fd are simply, listen for it and understand it before you write it down. The quantities Fn and Fd are simply the components of the weight force. Okay? These quantities here are components of the weight force. And this Fn is equivalent to that one right there. Fd pulls it down the plane, Fd, and Fn affects the friction. Okay, I'll pause there and let you get that down. What I've done here is I've introduced the idea of these components of that weight force that one goes down the plane and one is perpendicular, okay? And this whole idea that there's going to be a net force. Okay, now, we need to come up with some formulas for these things, right? So I'm going to sort of zoom in on that little triangle that I just drew previously, okay? And we're going to have a closer look. So this triangle here is the same as this blue and red one that I just drew, okay? I'm going to take this triangle right here. Can I do this? I'm going to take this, so I went too big. Take that triangle right there, and I'm going to zoom in and redraw it for you right there. Rather than the edge? Um... Some books come have a show up coming from the middle because that's center gravity, and some come from the edge. And there really isn't, I think it's more just convention really big. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Okay, so there's that um, there's that triangle that I zoomed in on. Um, weight force is always what direction? Straight down. The normal force or the Component of the wave force that is perpendicular to the surface of the plane, i.e. normal force, right, is going to be perpendicular to the surface, and the FD is in the same direction as the plane. How did I get this angle right here? This theta right here. Let's just go back a slide for a second. I put in the theta right there. Look at that picture. And I wish I had that little Java thing, but apparently I need to update stuff. So just watch you guys. Watch, watch. Here's the learning part. You guys would just spend the 20 minutes with me. All those other hours would be so much easier. It really would. I wish you'd understand that. Does it make sense to you visually that this angle here is the same as that angle right there? This angle right here at the bottom of the ramp is equivalent to that angle right there. Does, it, does that visually make sense to you? Right? I wish I had the app to show you, right? But I think you see, as I make this bigger... Well, what's going to happen here? That's going to get more spread out, is it not? Right? Okay. So, that angle in there is theta as well. Is this a 90 degree angle? Is it? Yes, because Fn is perpendicular to the surface and Fd is parallel to the surface. So it is indeed a 90 degree angle, which means we can use what? Pythagoras and sine, cos, and tan. Okay, so if you look carefully at this, theta, opposite is FD, adjacent is FN, and so opposite sine theta equals FD over hypotenuse MG. Let's just ignore this one over here on the right for now. 
Okay, so FD is MG sine theta. That, my friends, is a formula that you can take to the bank. Wrap it up, put a box around it, put it under the tree. FD is equal to MG sine theta. Where does the MG come from? FW is equal to M times G. Right? Stay with me, Brady. Don't, don't take little tours. Stay with me, man. It's not long. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for FN. Question down? Mass times gravity. Uh, it's a force, right? Are you asking me if you need to put the negative 9.8 in there? Okay. Dan is asking, that's a really good question. It usually comes up at some point. Dan is asking, do we need the negative with the 9.8? The FD is what directs the negative in the 9 minus 9.8 means down. But this FD is what direction? Down the plane, right? But straight down is negative. So what direction is this? Well, if that straight down is negative and straight up is positive, so what direction is this? We don't have a name for it. Okay? It's just down the plane. Now there are some times when you might define down the ramp to be positive and up the ramp to be negative, and then it does matter, right? So the long or the short version of it is, is I would recommend not put minus 9.8 in there and just know that the FD is simply down the plane. And then when you got a force going up, you're going to have to deal with one being positive and one being negative. You asked the question a little bit earlier than normal, so kind of went on a bit longer than I should. Okay, so let's do, uh, we've got a formula for FD, now we need a formula for FN. Okay, how am I going to do that? I'm going to use cos, right? FN is adjacent hypotenuse, so I'm going to write cosine is equal to FN over MG. And how does that shake down now? Fn is equal to mg cos theta. Put a box around. You're going to use it. Shall we do a sample? We have a 5 kilogram mass at the top of a ramp. Uh, the ramp is a meter long for easy working. It's a 30 degree angle, and that's about all we know, really. Right? I guess there's one more thing we know that's not that's not stated explicitly, which is the gravity minus half weight. So we're going to find the weight force, the normal force, the FD, the A net. Time to get to the bottom and the velocity the bottom. Normally, in a question, you would not get all those steps. You would have to sort of know what steps they are, but we're going to sort of show you the, the route to get there. Okay, so let's find them in order. FW, always easy. Should you always start with finding the weight force? Yeah, likely. Oops. Mass times gravity, what was it? Five or ten? Five. Should I include the minus 9.8 here? Yeah, probably. It, it's down, right? And I know that it's a struggle for kids. I know I get that you're not sure when to use it or not. But this comes from experience. So that's going to be minus 49 newtons. Finding the normal force. Mg cos theta. I've already got the mg. Here's where it wouldn't be negative. So this is going to be 49 cos 49 cos 30. I get 42.4 newtons. Is there a sign associated with that? A direction? There will be eventually. We're not going to worry about it just yet, right? It's it's up. It's kind of at an angle. We can't really define. It. We're not going to worry about it just yet. FD. F 
mg sine theta. So same thing as mg before, so 49 sine 30. Twenty-four point five newtons. In what direction? Down the plane. Quite often we draw the FD in that spot there. Instead of being here. Quite often we draw it there because it's actually sort of acting down the plane. Are there any other forces acting on it in that direction, down the ramp or up the ramp? It didn't say anything about friction, so we can only assume it's friction. So in, in other words, the FD is really the, the net force. It is the sum of all forces in the direction that we care about. The FD is the net force. The sum of all forces in the direction of the curve. Is that good? Um, I'm building something for the future. Yeah, when friction comes up, you have to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Mu equals F, F over Fn. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're just going to keep calling it Fn. Just to keep it a little bit simpler. Okay, right. so A net, the actual acceleration. F net is equal to MA. Because I've already decided that the FD is equal to the F net, so my F net is 24.5. The mass was 5 times A, giving us an acceleration of. 4.9 meters per second squared. Keep in mind the F net equals MA is what I call the bridging formula. Remember, it takes you into the Kinemax part of the world. Time to get to the bottom. So I'm solving for T. What's the acceleration? 4.9. Do I know the distance? I think it was one meter. You can assume VI is zero. You have to. It doesn't say anything about it starting from any motion, right? So it's going to be like that. So which one works for us? Yeah. VIT plus a half AT squared. Distance is one. Initial velocity is zero. One half, four point nine t squared, solving for t. Uh, not negative. All right, so t is going to be the square root of one over two point two five. All good? No? I took times by 2.25 to the other side, it becomes 1 divided by 2.25, and then square root. Okay, velocity at the bottom would just be VF equals VI plus AT, 0 plus that acceleration of 4.9, time of 6.4, how fast is it going at the bottom of the ramp? 3.14 meters per second. Just a coincidence, nothing to do with pi. Pi is good though. I like Saskatoon pi if you're wondering. Okay. 
I want to show you one last thing. Do I have it? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. How would you like me to make things a little simpler for you? Duh, of course. Uh, no? She's saying that I shouldn't make it easier because you got to go and do the work. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna shorten the route for you, aren't I? Yeah. All right. Well, I can just do this, I guess. Now you should know this. Note on a frictionless surface, is this true? F net is equal to F D on a frictionless surface. That the F D is equal to the F net. Right. So this means let's just put our two formulas together here and see what shakes out. Would you agree? F net is equal to F D. What is F net equal to? M times A. What's F D equal to? M G sine theta. Your warning, your spider senses should be tingling. What can we do? Can you do that? Cancel out mass on both sides? So A equals G sine theta. Only on a frictionless surface. Only on a frictionless surface. No? I don't think I've shortened the course of player. I think I've used my my knowledge here and I figured out that I should, you know, when I'm running around a corner on the course, I should take the inside corner to make it short, using my brain. Is that okay with you? Yeah. On a frictionless surface, the acceleration is equal to G sine theta. Okay. There are a whole whack of questions in the textbook. They are challenging. Do not start with those. Okay, I'm going to give you a handout right away that are pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. If they're, if you're finding those easy, move along to the ones in the book. I'll stop talking now. See how that was painless? 22 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Will has pointed out that I used my head and I shouldn't trust my head anymore. Half of 4.9 is not 2.25, is it? Yeah, this, this number here is not 2.25, it's, yeah, because I, I just read it off the sheet, I didn't do the calculation. Oh. Yeah. 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 Completely my fault, I screwed up. I did the calculation in my head and I was wrong. I was thinking 5, right? Yeah, my mistake. But that 0.64 is right. 